And for those, for those guests who maybe came in a different door or didn't get an opportunity, we have uh, a gift out here out the front door from Brother Patrick and Miss Joy. So if you're a guest here today and you haven't picked up a gift from Brother Patrick and Miss Joy, please try to exit out that door or see someone about that before you leave. Thank you. Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body and drink.
sorrow and dead in my sin, lost without hope with no place to begin. You love me. Death was arrested, my life began. And ash was redeemed, only beauty remains. My orphan heart was given the name. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested, my life Your grace so free washes over me. You have made me new now. Life begins with you. Release from my chain. I'm a prisoner. rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hand. That's when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your race so free washes would bow with me please dear heavenly father thank you so much for all that has gathered here today to worship you and to remember what you did for us on the cross and that you rose from the grave for us so that we can live that you 
took all our sins and all our shame. Now we can live through God's eyes as you did. Dear Heavenly Father, if there's anyone here that does not know you and does not know how to live, because a life without you is not even a life, please let them get to know you today and want to call you Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.
be seated. Listen to this, Cheryl. Everyone knows she's a single mother. But did you know she was never divorced? She was never married. But what if it did happen before she became a Christian? I sure don't want that kind of woman working in the nursery, do you? Well, listen, I've got to go. The movie's about to start. Bye. It's like every time she looks at me, she's judging me. Just try not to let it bother you, sweetie. She's waiting for me to relapse. I've been sober for two years. I'm trying. I've changed. I go to every single AA meeting. I'm trying. She just doesn't seem to get it. She loves to tell everybody how her and dad found me passed out in my apartment in my own vomit. I'm just so over it. It's as crowded as a brothel in. Hey, come on. I don't talk like that anymore, and you shouldn't either. Okay, I forgot you've turned over a new leaf. It ain't like nobody heard me anyway. I heard you. Well, you used to say a lot worse. I used to do and say a lot of things, but I'm trying to make sure what comes out of my mouth is more godly. It ain't easy. I get it. The last few years, you've really been a different person. You're doing a good job. There's two seats. You know, Deacon nomination is coming up next week. Jen really has her heart set on me being asked to do one. You think I got a chance? Well, I wouldn't be a good friend if I blew smoke at you. People don't look at how you are now. They look at how you used to be. I tell Jen not to get her hopes up. So you're telling me God sees me as a new creation, but everybody else looks at me like I'm the same old person? What's the point in trying to change then? Shh, the movie's about to start. He was my brother. He was dead. Jesus waited four days to come to us. Figured we'd all die. Everybody that hated Jesus would be there. Turns out just one of us. And he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Lazarus! Come forth! Was spread fast because of it. He knew the Pharisees would have him killed because of it. Someone who raises a man who had been dead for four days, the man who could do that had to be the Messiah. And that man was a threat to the Pharisees' entire way of life. Jesus knew what lay ahead. It was the reason he had come. Jesus had come to free us from sin. We are no longer bound by the sin in our life. No longer bound by our past. But there's something else that he said. It seemed so redundant at the time. 
you know? I'm buying him? Of course we were going to get our brother out of those grave clothes. Why would we have to be told that? It wasn't just instructions for the day. It was a commandment for all of us. Unbind him from the fields he was wrapped in. Stop looking at him like he's a dead man. My brother, he couldn't unbind himself. He needed our help. Find him and let him go. Really glad you're here with us for Easter. We believe that Easter's a celebration, and uh, I hope that you enjoy the celebration with us this morning. We're going to be in our Bible in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 28. Uh, thank you. Let's let's uh, show our appreciation to the musicians, the drama team. They've done a great job. Thank you, guys. So many people behind the scenes making this happen. Uh, also, our children, three years and under, there's child care across the way. If you would like to go, uh, they have something special planned for the children. If your parents would like to go and check that out, then uh, we invite you to go over. They're welcome to stay with us. A crying baby doesn't bother anybody except mostly the parents. So if you would like a break, then feel free to take your children over. They'll be in good hands. We're going to be in Matthew chapter, uh, what did I say, 28. Hey, would you bow with me for prayer? Let's pray. Father, you are so good. We come into your presence so grateful and thankful for the freedom to worship, for a service like this, for a community that gathers together in respect and reverence and honor and celebration of today. Today is a day unlike any other, and we pause to say thank you. We worship you. In this moment where we open your word, please guide us in truth for the next couple of minutes. Help us to understand what you would say to us. What was meant on the video by the unbinding and letting go, by this raising of Lazarus, what your resurrection means in our life today, thousands of years later. Jesus' name, amen, amen. I'm so glad you're here. We want to welcome you. I hope you feel welcome. If you have not been welcomed, if you have not had your hand shook or uh, somebody getting your name or a hug, my, my wife and I will be out at the, at, the te at the tent as you leave. Even if you're parked in the back, would you please exit this and stop at the tent. We have a gift for you if you haven't gotten one already, and we want to meet you personally. Uh, Matthew chapter 28, we're here today in celebration of a resurrection, a resurrection. I want to read the account in Matthew chapter 28 and verse number 1. If you don't have your Bible open, you can follow along up here. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to view the tomb. There was a violent earthquake because an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and approached the tomb. He rolled back the stone and was sitting on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The guards were also so shaken by fear of him that they became like dead men. The angel told the women, Don't be afraid, because I know who you are looking for, for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. We're here because of Jesus. Jesus rose from the dead. Hey, look at your neighbor and say, he rose. Now look at your other one and say, he really did. Hey, I'm going to tell you, Jesus didn't just swoon. He didn't come close to dying. He wasn't like in a coma and then they put him in a cold tomb and then he kind of woke up. He wasn't as if this is a thing, barely dead. <laughs> he was beaten and tortured. He was hung on a cross for six hours. He had a crown of thorns beat deep into his scalp. He had a spear pierced all the way from his side, all the way into his heart to drain the remaining blood out. He had a whip 39 times, but in this whip it probably had nine or more lashes on it. And he had this many scars and, and gouges and wounds all the way around his body as that glass and stone cut in. He didn't get CPR. He didn't get a defibrillator 
or Narcan. It was three days that he had been dead. His body was cold and stiff. You know, anybody in here have the power to wake themselves up? Like when you go to bed at night and you think, I'm going to get up at 6 o'clock. Anybody in here can do that? I've done that a couple of times on accident. Like woke up just a few minutes. Anybody in here can do that? Wake yourself up out of sleep. Now, I've woken myself up accidentally, like in a dream, like been startled. You know, most people can't even wake themselves up. Even if you're in a bad dream and you want to get out of the bad dream, you can't even wake yourself up out of sleep. Do you realize that Jesus woke himself up out of death? He was dead and he just got up. That's a miracle. That's something worth talking about. That's something worth celebrating. I, we were saying amen, and I, I still feel that in my heart. Maybe you do, and maybe you want to just, woo, you know, hey, feel free. It's fine. We got a little of that in sunrise service. Brother Danny fired us all up this morning as the sun came. It felt good, even 40 degrees out there. He got up. By the time the angel came down and rolled the stone away, Jesus was already gone. He didn't roll the stone away. He didn't even need the stone rolled away. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why we're here. We're here because of that resurrection, a risen Savior, a man who claimed to be God, who was God, who didn't let death stop him. He came out of the grave, conquered death, and he promised all of that for you. That's why we're here today. Now, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I love this verse because Br Brother Danny this morning, he was reading this verse about if Christ is not risen, and he talked about all the effects. If Easter is not true, if it's a hoax, if it's not worth celebrating, then man, there's a whole lot of terrible things. But then it changes in verse number 20. But as it is, Christ has been raised from the dead. And he is now the first fruits of all those who have, I love the way the scripture said, fallen asleep. So Jesus is the first fruits. He's not the only one. He's the first fruits. I don't know how many of you have, been to a, a you know like, like I, i'm thinking right now about brother joe's orchard you know driving through on, on that little kubota and coming through and seeing that orchard and we we're talking about the there's the, the apple trees and the pear trees and you know all the and that first fruit that comes out i mean i'm sure he's got an eye he's watching hey this this tree's already blooming and he's gonna watch and he's gonna see he don't want that first fruit to hit the ground he's gonna be out there looking for it he's gonna bring it in and say look miss annie look at this fruit and she's gonna say oh thank you and he's gonna take a big bite because he's gonna have it for himself right he might share it i don't know first fruit but it's just one it's just the first it's not the only jesus is saying here he was the first to conquer death he's the first to come back but he's not going to be the only there are going to be many that follow those that follow him in life will follow him out of death and into new life. Even before this first Easter, though, even before this first resurrection, there was another. I found it interesting. When you think about Jesus being the first fruits, you can go, still go back in reverse, and you run into this account that we just watched of, of Lazarus. And he was a resurrection account. In John chapter 11, if you're following along in your Bible, in John chapter 11, we, we go to verse number 20, and Mary and Martha, who you saw depicted on the screen there, they, they come at, to Jesus, and, and basically they start saying, they heard that he was there, and they said in verse number 21, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died, but you're too late. Yet even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give to you. Your brother will rise again, Jesus told her. Martha said to him, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. I'm going to stop right there and say that's what Easter means to most people, a resurrection at the last day. But you see, Jesus delayed on purpose. He delayed on purpose because he wanted to show them something about resurrection. He wanted to show us something about resurrection this morning. I want to talk this morning about three resurrections. I've already mentioned one, and that's why we're all here, the resurrection of Jesus. But I, I want to talk about the second one here, and it's the resurrection of Lazarus. Verse number 25, if you see it up here, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even if he dies, will live. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Her answer, yes. Yes, Lord. 
I believe you're the Messiah, the Son of God, who came into the world. Do you believe? Do you believe? Jesus said this. I want to go back. Miss Tracy, if you'll put it up, verse number 25. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus didn't just have the power of resurrection. He literally was the power of resurrection. In him flowed resurrection power. Here's what's amazing. Now, I'm gonna, let, let's illustrate for a minute. Resurrection and life. I am the resurrection and life. Resurrection means out of death. It comes from two words, anastasis. Ana meaning out of, stasis meaning death. So this up here is life, and then this would be death, all right? And so nobody stays kind of in between. At a moment in time, that person crosses from death, from life to death, and they're declared they're dead. They're passed away. Now, resurrection means out of death, right? Okay, so you, Jesus said, I am the out of death. Then he says, I am the life, which means no death, undeath. Now, how can and why would we need both? Why would we need both? If he says, I am the no death, and if we trust in him, no death, then why would he say, I am the undeath, or I am the out of death? If he says, I am life, and if you believe in me, you will never see death, then why would he have to promise that he would take us out of death? Are you tracking with me? Because that seems a little extra and redundant. Now, maybe that's God, and that is God, but I'll tell you, there's a secret in here. He's actually talking about two different kinds of life and death. He's not simply speaking of a physical life and death. He said, I am the resurrection, the out of death, and the life, undeath, or no death. Two kinds of life here. I love what he says. Let's look through the, fast forward in the story, if you a little bit, in, in verse number 43. And then Jesus, he goes to the tomb and he shouts with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth, come out. And the dead man came out, bound hand and foot with linen strips and his face wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to him, you get in the picture like a mummy as he shuffles forward. Unwrap him, unbind him, and, and let him go. And the sisters and the other people that were there rushed to the scene to do this. Now, that may seem a little unusual, unwrap him and let him go, but those words we use all the time in our language today, not like that, but we use them all the time. The word unwrap him literally means to set him free as if you would open the cage on a bird. Let him go. Then why did he say if unwrap him means let him go, why did he say let him go? Because unwrap him means to set free from slavery, to let him go. To let him go, the second has a little different meaning. It's the word we use today, forgive. Man, I was so touched, so touched. This morning, a little boy came to me, and he came in weakness, and he came in tenderness, and he came in such courage, and he came to me, a guy about this big. And I can be, I guess, pretty intimidating. I can't imagine that. And he came to me and he said, hey, Mr. Patrick, he caught my attention under the bill of his calf. And I looked down and he said, I'm sorry. You don't know what it means and nobody else, but he and I knew. And I got down, he just brought me down, like my knees buckled. And I put my hand on his chest and I said, I forgive you, it's, it's okay. It's all good. Let him go. Because he doesn't have to live under the feeling of that anymore. Let him go. He doesn't have to carry that weight or that condemnation or that, that heaviness of the intimidation of all the, the conflict of the interaction or what would pass if he hadn't have said he's sorry. He doesn't have to face any of that. He put on Hanno's chest and he just grinned real big and and it's just the power of forgiveness is amazing between humans. But imagine a God who we owe so deeply because of all of our sin. And imagine that he would say, I let you go. I forgive you. And you see, what you find here is you find freedom from sin's power. The chain 
no longer have bondage and binding. Several of the songs we just sang have the word free, free, forever we're free. And there's hope because of the forgiveness from sin's penalty. That's what Easter is. That's the resurrection and the life. You see, that is hope both today and tomorrow, both the present and the future. Two kinds of life that we're talking about. Jesus said it this way. Go back to John chapter 10 and verse number 10. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have life, how? More abundantly. Two kinds of life. Not just life like eternal life, but life now, abundant life. And because of that, two kinds of hope. Two kinds of life, resurrection and life, both present and eternal, both now and forever, both today and tomorrow, because we need forgiveness from sin's penalty, but we also need freedom from sin's power. Many people come to church, and we'll come to church today, and maybe you're here, having only experienced one kind of life from the resurrection from Jesus. You think that Jesus offers you an eternal home and you think that's all he offers you and you're content with your get out of hell free card and you go back home and you struggle with sins change. You struggle with addictions and hurts and habits and, and hangups and all the things that weigh on you, on us. And you don't know that Jesus, his resurrection and Easter affects that. His resurrection is meant to impact where you live and what you walk through. It's not just an eternal home in heaven. It's not just tomorrow in the future. It is today. That resurrection power is meant for you. And get this, church. The scripture says that if you are saved, if you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, now this isn't an if and if. If you are saved, you do have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. And if the Holy Spirit's in you, the scripture says this. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. That's what it says. That's not a self-help book. That's the Word of God. So I want to talk about the third resurrection. First one is Jesus. The second one is Lazarus that reminds us. You know, Lazarus, he had to, he had to die again. Wouldn't that stink? Thanks, Jesus. I mean, dying was bad enough twice but see look Jesus was teaching us I am the resurrection he will rise again in the last day we will meet Lazarus if you know Jesus but Lazarus had a life changing experience because he met Jesus then don't wait to have a life changing experience until your deathbed until you see Jesus face to face the resurrection and Easter ought to impact your todays as well as your future I want to talk about the third one. And the third resurrection I want to mention is yours. It's yours. Because the scripture promises that this life is not all there is. And all of us will either rise to death or rise to damnation. That's what it says. Look with me in Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 1. And he and you, he made alive. We were dead in trespasses and sins but God who is rich in mercy amen rich in mercy because of his great love which he loved us he did this even when we were dead in trespasses he made us alive with Christ that's present tense he made us alive with Christ for by grace you have been saved we will all rise from the dead we will all rise some to life and some to damnation. Hey, religion, this church is not about good people getting better. Jesus didn't die to make good people better. That's what people think church is about. Well, I'm not good enough to go to church, or maybe they think I'm already good. That's not what it's about. Jesus died to make dead people come to life. We were dead in sin. If you were dead in sin, say, I was. Hey, all of us should have said that, but... Sometimes we haven't recognized it yet. The Bible says we were all dead in sin. How many of you, you've been made alive through Jesus? Would you raise your hand? You understand new life? Amen. Let that hand raise be a praise to God because it's only by grace that we're saved. Many of us have hope in Jesus for heaven, but we don't know how that affects life. 
woke up this morning, and I don't know how many of you grab your phone first. I do. I, don't, I grab it before I grab the Bible, just being honest. I grab my phone, my alarm was going off, and I hit it. I was about to lay down, and I thought, no, nah, I'm going to open it up, and I open it up, and ding, Facebook. I thought, ugh, what's going on? So I clicked in, first thing, Sri Lanka bombing this morning, and Christians gather to go to church in that little island off of India, and the death toll is now well over 200. A terrorist attack, uh, over six, I think six churches and hotels, snuck in while they were having Easter service. And blew their bombs up. And you know what's you know what's amazing? Is that those people had their hands up, kissing at Jesus in love. And they exited this world with their hands up and entered the other one with arms wrapped around them, welcoming them home. They thought they were punishing and doing a disservice to Christianity and to Christians. When death does not scare and intimidate a Christian. It does not. If I'm scared of a little pain, I don't want to go out painfully. Right? Amen. But I ain't scared of death. I mean, you can't scare me with heaven. <laughs> don't get any ideas. My life insurance isn't all together ready. That's why I haven't filled it yet. Joy has had, you know, afraid to put a temptation in her life. I scrolled down a little further, and then I saw that right, right in our backyard on Hood's Branch Road, there was a fatal shooting. Just right here. No details released. Right there. More on the Springfield side than on the Flew Ellen side, but right there. Somebody just mentioned to me, What's his name? Brad. Passed away. We've been praying for him. Pancreatic cancer. It, it hits all of us. I'll, I'll tell you, in light of bombings and all that stuff, this seems trivial, but I, I, I feel like I, I... You know, you may be here and you may be like the perfect family. you got it together and you, you look around and you're like, all right, Where's the little photo booth? We got all matching outfits. You know, I'm just praying none of you catch our family in one spot because we are all over the place color wise. We got kids in sweatpants and tennis shoes, and I ain't joking. All right, so uh, I mean, and our family, and I that's it doesn't bother me as much. I, that stresses my wife out. How many of you ladies say amen with that? You know, it's just, and and so we're looking at it going Easter. No, is that's not what Easter's about, but. Hey, it's the pastor and the pastor's wife, and look at them pastor's kids running around. Uh-huh, I know you be talking. Hey, either Jesus gives hope in this life or he doesn't. Yesterday, man, it was a, it was a punch in the gut. So all week we had been praying, we have been excited. Some of you we invited in and asked prayer, you know, just said, hey, pray with us about this. We live in White House, and there's some property just about a mile away. And we were, man, we were so excited. We thought, man, it's going up for auction. And it, it's way, it's like more than I would dream of. I mean, it's beautiful. It's got a place to fish and a place to hunt and a place to raise family and a, a place to tie up bad kids. And, I mean, it's got a place for everything. And uh, I, I was, we were so excited. And I was praying about it through the week. And the more I prayed about it, the more peace I had. I found out it took $10,000 to, uh, to go bid, and I was like, man, I ain't got $10,000. And Joy and I were just like, let's pray about it. If God wants us to do this, he'll, I mean, he'll make it. Did you know that our God made everything out of nothing? So I figured $10,000 is not a problem for him. I don't know how it's going to work, but I just thought, Lord, if you want it to work, you'll make it work. So I was praying. It's a little awkward because there's a guy in this room who called me, and I don't even know what he meant. He On my way to the auction, he texts me and says, hey, what do you need? And I was like, LOL, 10000 bucks if you got it. And he texts back, and it was, and was kind of, I don't know what he meant. He may correct me after, but he was kind of like, just let me know. I was like, I'm bidding. <laughs> I'm bidding. I don't even want to look him in the eye right now because I don't. 
I was like, all right. I didn't tell him that, but I was like, all right. Well, hey, maybe this, Lord, is this your go-ahead? Yes, I think it is. So we got there, and I, I was praying about it, looked at the house. I'm telling you what, it's just perfect. I mean, the house, we, we would squeeze five or six kids in there, and, and it would have been, it would have been fun. And I got excited. I got excited because I just, I just love my kids and I want to have something special for them. I want to do something. And our heart is to be here in our community. That's our heart. And we, we were so excited and we sat down and Ronnie was there. He sat down and, and he was like, well, this, this is a big place. This is going to go for about 450 And I was like, Oh, you have little faith. But in the back of my mind, I, I'm thinking, get behind me, Satan. Because I, uh, Lord knows my budget. And so I'm thinking, all right, Lord. So I was praying about it. I, was, I did the math, and I thought, right now we're spending $455 in gas driving back and forth. And we'll put that toward the mortgage. And I did my math, and I thought, all right, here's about my threshold. Now, that may be lack of faith, or that may be wisdom. I still don't know. Anyway, I got in the bidding and was bidding and bidding, and I thought, hey, I got a bid. You know how the auctioneers do. You know, somebody outbids you, and they'll come look right at you. You're going to let $2,500 stand in the way of this beautiful property, you know? No, okay, all right. He bids, I bid, he bids, and he's sitting there, and he, he bids, and I'm about at the threshold, and he comes over here, looks at me, he's like, oh. So one more time, I do this, and then in a second, he outbid me, and then the bidding kept going way beyond, and I was like, oh peace about it. I just thought, God knows. I slipped my little 208 marker under my seat there, and I sat there, and they moved the auction. They sold the property, moved the auction outside, and I told my boys. I had two of the big boys with me, Lance and Asher, and I said, guys, I said, man, I wanted to get this for you. I'm sorry. I started tearing up, and they said, God, we have peace. We're fine. We love you. We trust God. We trust you. So I made it home, and I was still, man, I was choking it back. Because I, I had expected, and I thought that that peace meant that we were going to get it. I mean, on the way, I get this text. I don't know if it meant I was getting ten grand or getting a loan or what. I don't know what that meant, but I was like, God, why did you do all this and set it up? And then it just kind of kept running. Maybe there was something, and I started doubting myself and started feeling like, well, maybe I should have done better homework. Maybe I should have done this. And, and I had, I had, I'll tell you this, I had felt distinctly like I shouldn't have done any of that earlier in the week. But then I get to doubt myself. You all ever do that? And uh, so I get home, and Joy's like, how was it? And I just, she saw my countenance. I said, I just need to go in the back room. And so I went in our bedroom, and I just, I don't do it often. I lay down on the floor, man, and I was, I don't know that I've cried as hard as I did since my dad died. Man, I just, I was snotting on the floor. I just, I just pouring it out. I don't understand. And my wife walks in and she puts her arms around me. And I, I needed her to be there, but I wanted to be alone. You know, it was kind of one of those things. As soon as she walked in, I, I knew oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wind it down. She put her arms around me and kind of lifted my face up. I made eye contact, and she, she said, "You know why you're upset? You're upset because you want something good for your family." She said, is God not your father? Is he not a better father than you? And do you not think that he wants good things for you? Yes, ma'am. If Jesus' resurrection affects heaven, why wouldn't it affect your today? If he gave you eternal life, why wouldn't you think that it was supposed to impact your life today? You see, if you know Jesus and you raised your hand and said, I've been free, I mean, I've been forgiven from sin's penalty, Jesus wants you to have hope today. He wants you to have freedom from sin's power. And that means freedom over worry, anxiety, the, the, the bondage of fear, or maybe it's drugs or alcohol or food or something else. Or maybe it's just something simple like worrying about what people think of you. Jesus offers forgiveness and freedom. Through himself. I want to invite you this morning to come. If you need forgiveness from sin's penalty, 
I would love to meet you and just pray with you and say, if you feel condemned, you feel under the weight, and you feel like that little boy who came to me this morning and just said, I'm sorry. If you just want to come to Jesus and, and this morning and let me, let me pray with you and lead you to Jesus. If you need to feel free and hope in this life and understand deliverance from sin's power, we want you to, to come this morning. If you need prayer, come. If hope is gone, come. If you're looking for a church home that exalts Jesus, come. You may be carrying a burden and you just want to lay it here. Come. I want to ask our worship team to come up front. I'm going to ask, I didn't prep them, but our leaders, our Bible teachers, our deacons, I want to ask that we have at least one or two and men and ladies at each aisle. That you would come and stand up here and just that you would welcome people if they come and you just take their hand and pray with them. If you're here this morning and you say, you know what, the Holy Spirit inside of me, he's, He is working on me. I don't even know how to express it. I want to know more. I need to know more. Would you come this morning? Please stand with us. Heavenly Father, we ask, we beg that you would continue to, to speak to hearts. Your Easter power is working today. Your resurrection power is not just for eternity in a home in heaven, but it is for today. May we understand and see that. As we sing this song, may many come to you. Families that are broken, may they come to you. Dads who feel like, like they failed. They don't understand that the resurrection, it's meant to give power in fatherhood. Mothers who are overwhelmed. Teenagers who are struggling with a secret, high, hidden addiction. Lord, draw people to yourself. If you're in the church house this morning, if God has spoken to you, would you come?
Amen. Uh, I said it before, man. I'm glad you're here. We've had some. Uh, it's been good this morning. We're going to dismiss here in just a minute. Uh, but before we do, I, I want to tell you, there, there'll be men at the door, and they'll have offering plates. Now, we don't normally do a second offering, but th that offering plate is for two reasons. Number one, our members, some of you last week, we had an Annie Armstrong missions offering, and it caught some of you off guard, and I heard feedback. And so we're continuing that offering. If you would still like to give outside of this church, to send it to plant churches, it's all around North America, Canada, America, and, and the territories around if you're a guest and you have your connection card but didn't get it in the first offering, would you drop that in that plate as well? We appreciate that. Again, our guests uh, see us at the tent. Uh, and that's all I have right now. Let's sing one more, can we? All right.
Easter, guys. He rose from the grave. I need to hear voices. If we can't raise a hallelujah today, I, I don't think we're getting it. I think Brother Patrick's going to have to get back up here and do the whole thing over again. And if everybody's getting hungry, then I suggest we all raise a hallelujah and I'll let us all go home, I promise. Here we go, one time together, please. I'll raise a hallelujah. glad you came. Uh, one one quick thing. If you're a home folk, I'm talking to you. Hey, Granny's going to wait an extra 45 seconds. Please take a minute. There's a lot of new faces. Please take a minute to just say, hey, turn around and find that friend you ain't seen in forever or that new face and just welcome them. Thank you for being here. God bless you.